on you and look at an extended family of love. Thank you for being here. These are dark but full of hope days. Drew always said to me, Mom, you and I need people. They are what energize us. And since Drew is now all set for life with Jesus, God, heavenly angels, and lots of family, I guess it's Tam Tam time to share Drew. Tam Tam, Mom, and Mama. I know, 10 days ago I sent Drew a text message because he forgot to call me back, and I said, this isn't my son. I'm considering cutting some phone numbers off of your, your um, or I'm considering blocking some phone numbers from your phone. He goes, Mama, <laughs> I'm at the bowling alley with Neil. Call you back later. Um, Drew always expected me to be strong and gave me such encouragement to do so, listening, sharing the word, and praying with me. On March 15th, I received a voicemail that starts out with a, Mama, laugh, laugh. We want a day without talking. This is unacceptable, laugh, laugh. And then on about his day with a, St. Patty's Day is coming up, Mom. Busy, busy, busy. Drew certainly was busy, and I've spent this past week in Florida following Drew's road less, less traveled. It's like the love mystery tour, a wild adventure of love which Drew has been on. Both during his good times and bad times, Drew has never stopped affecting people for the positive and pointing to God. I watched his place of work wearing blue ribbons in honor of Drew since they found out blue ribbons for our Drew's blue eyes. And that's why you all have blue ribbons today. It's, it's moved up from Florida. The owner of his restaurant wanted to, he offered to host the food or anything else he could possibly do for Drew's memorial, which was last Thursday evening at Calvary Chapel in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. That one they had the big live stream, so you can go to Facebook and see that one too. I've already watched it three times. I attended a memorial at the Cleveland house where Drew lived his first six months in Florida last Saturday morning. I listened to one young man named Freddie share how Drew gave him both clothes and food during his time of need, that he still, and he still had some of those clothes. I seriously considered asking for some of those clothes bats back because he looked like he was doing pretty well. He had kind of a fly zip up on. <laughs> the list goes on. Neil and Sister Eddie. Drew was like his son, and he helped fix beds for the homeless. I know one morning I couldn't get through to him. Drew, where are you? I couldn't get through to you. Mom, I'm putting a bed together for Sister Eddie. All right, that, that sounds good. I joined a candle lighting service at St. Gregory the Great, and on Thursday night, he had his Florida memorial with Stevie B officiating. Stevie B is Mr. Recovery of South Florida. He rocks the world, and he was rocking Drew's memorial service last week. I also saw Drew's 144 balloon birthday bash. Messages sent to Drew to celebrate his life and 25th year in heaven. Yes, memorials fueled by the people Drew my lover boy and connector has beautifully expanded our family to include, enlarging it to be full of those who love our son. When I arrived at Miami Airport last week, I had two carloads of kids to pick me up. That's true. His mom's coming in. And he loved all of you, too. When I opened his laptop, four birthdays are on, from all of you Arrowhead, you know, with Calvin Lenz, his cousin Jillian tomorrow, um, he's never forgotten. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. If you only look at us, we carry this precious message around in the unadorned clay pots of our ordinary lives. Drew carried the message. Drew was at a pinnacle in his faith. In his most recent journal entries, Drew was giving God full reign. Journal entry, January 9, 2013. There is so much I want out of life, and so much God wants out of me. I am so blessed to be called his son, to do his will. He requires everything, though, and whatever I give him always brings fruit. 
hold up, question mark, exclamation point. Everything I give to God bears fruit in my life? What am I waiting for? Today, Lord, I give you all my all, in mind, body, and spirit. Search my heart and use me as you will. I pray your power in my life be shown and your will be done. You are real. You love me. You want me to know you. Take control today, Lord. In spite of all my sin and shortcomings, my heart is yours. Amen. Okay, so just got to work after listening to Bob Coy's Sunday message on Daniel. Again, so convicting on so many different levels. So happy right now. Back to Mama. My son was full of joy. I was so privileged to have Drew's my son. Blessed, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Drew was my joy. I relate to Mary's joy and the mercy of being blessed to have him as my son and to know that he took his first breath in heaven a few days after the resurrection that we celebrated. Speaking of blessed, I also found two special things. One was a photo that Drew had saved to his laptop of my tremendous dart throw when competing against Leslie and Jack with my husband Jamie. My dart throw, as you all can imagine, may not have been a bullseye, but it was into the brick wall <laughs> in the bar. <laughs> Drew saved that photo and he coached me through Jack, you know, Florida to Michigan, tell mom, no more tonic and limes, have her just relax. <laughs> We did beat the undefeated Leslie and Jack that particular night. I think a lot of it due to Drew's coaching. I also received another tremendous blessing when cleaning out Drew's room down south. I found a signed, sealed, unstamped Valentine's Day card for my son. Happy Valentine's Day to a mom who always knows best. Okay, so your cooking wasn't that bad. But I can think of some stronger character traits. Your smile, your laugh, your love, your kindness, and your unfaltering commitment to Christ has been an example to me, your son. Love you so much, Mom. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Big heart, Andrew Swan. Big heart, and do you see what I mean by saying so blessed? Today I wear my son's wristband, live for him. Today I wear the cross made by his sponsor, Joshua. And today I wear the peace that passes all understanding. And having a son who loved God with all his heart and followed Jesus. The song that was sung in closing his memorial service in Florida shares the following lyrics, which are my truth. Our prayers have been answered. The healing has now been realized. No one's in a hurry. There's no schedule to keep. We're all enjoying Jesus just sitting at his feet. If you could see me now, I'm walking streets of gold. If you could see me now, I'm walking tall and whole. The pains erased, you would not ever want me to leave this place. My light and temporary trials have worked out for my good. To know it brought him glory. I say amen. My son is with Jesus. And I know that he will save a place for me, for I, with so many, many of his new and old friends and family, have no intention of not seeing the amazing Drew Swan again. Questions, don't you? I'm going to do my best to answer. All right? By the way totally changing everything I was going to say. So if it doesn't come across this like I prepared it, I didn't. Here's number one. You should be really feeling com conflicted right now. Why should you feel conflicted? Because you know how he died. The family's been very honest with us about that. And then you see all these pictures. It's pictures of happiness, of love, of community, talk about God, the Bible, church, am I standing in the wrong place? There you go, closer to Drew, all right. You, you, 
you, if you don't feel conflicted, then you're not understanding life. Because this is life. It's the tension we live in. Uh, I have tried to be very honest with my church. And, and the honesty is this. I tell them I'm human. It so happens that with a preacher when he says that, they, they think, what's her name and how long? Well, when I say I'm human, I'm not saying I'm having an affair. Or that I'm using. But what is going on in my heart is very black sometimes. And very dark. And there are times my heart goes to places that are is bad. And God is my rescuer. God is my salvation. God brings me back to the light. It so happens there was this moment in Drew's life that he went to a dark place. And then he chose in that dark time to do something he knew was wrong. But you know addiction is a, is a gift. And this is a gift for someone here today. And the gift is this. You say, how in the world can addiction be a gift? Because addiction is teaching us that this place isn't for us. It's not. Drew, uh, artistic spirit, lover of outdoors, lover of people, being touched by other people's brokenness, brokenness in his own home that they've been very honest about. Uh, it breaks you. It makes you long for another place. And so sometimes we self-medicate. Uh, that, that is the wrong choice, by the way. Drew knew that. If Drew was here, he could explain it better than me. But what I'm trying to say to you, the gift it is to us, is to draw us to God. The only one that can help us through it, get over it, and, and not end up like Drew. And Drew knew that. And again, I believe with all my heart, he could explain it better than me. See, if I make a choice to be dark, and my darkness may be bitterness that doesn't kill me. If my darkness is an unforgiving spirit, if my darkness happens to be pride and I'm addicted to wanting to be the best and show off in some way that you might not even spot it, but inside, I know. That's my addiction. That, but that doesn't kill me. It, it, it makes me a jerk, but it doesn't kill me. So I'm not saying that your addiction is going to kill you. But I am saying this. Eventually, it will if you don't come to God. It will because you're not going to be what you should be. You're not going to experience joy and love and peace. You see, sometimes we find out who we are by negation. Like if I'm out on the golf course and I play some golf with the swans and wings and good golf teacher. By the way, Wayne always enjoyed when you hooked it in the woods. Uh, it's just a little, remember that? I, he's a pro. He's a pro. <laughs> and I, now am I, when I'm on the golf course, I do a bad shot. I go, I'm not a PGA professional. And you wouldn't believe the piece that gives me. I mean, I don't get paid to do this. I hit it in the woods. You know, so what? Guess what? I'm not God. Because if I was God, this wouldn't be happening right now. If I was gone, Jack and, and Tamara and uh, would, Greg would not ever have to be up here to going through this. You cousins and nieces and grandparents, you would not be sitting here like this if I was gone. Uh, by the way, you're not God either. And let me tell you something. That is where all this starts. When you really, truly understand. Now listen, you're not in control. Because if I was in control, I would have rescued Drew. If they were in control, they would have rescued Drew. And God knows they tried. And others down in Fort Lauderdale tried. We all got to get off the God bus. And we got to let God be God. And his ways are not our ways and our, his thoughts are not our thoughts. And so 
why this happened, if you think you know why this happened, you're playing God. You have no idea why this happened. I don't know why it happened. God knows why it happened. And I believe with all my heart, and you may not believe this, I believe Drew's confession of faith and his belief in Jesus Christ that he's in heaven. And guess what? Sinners get to heaven. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We all fall short. And that leads us to three words. Faith, love, and hope. Faith. Faith is seeing those things that are not seen. Seeing those things that aren't seen. That spirituality. You don't see joy. You feel it. You can't do an experiment on joy. You can't do an experiment on love. So faith is seeing God in places you wouldn't normally see Him. Faith, hope, hope, hope. We won't need hope in heaven. We need hope now because as a couple showed up at our church and did a marriage retreat for us, their daughter at that same time was being tested and, and is, was in very, very ill. And they stood there with a, with a strong smile on their face and said, we suffer with Guess what the word was? Hope. We suffer with sin. Hope. They're going to suffer with hope. Some of you are going to suffer with hope. I suffer with it all the time because I take in other people's pain. And I have to believe there's hope. There's a way out of this mess. For that leads us to love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Drew died just before age 25. My mother died at age 86. The oldest man I've ever buried was Harry Jackson, here in Oconomowoc, 100 years old. 100. The youngest person ever buried was a three-day-old baby. But do you know why they're all the same? We all go back ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we need love to carry us through. We need somebody who's going to wrap their arms around us and say, I got you at your moment of greatest weakness. And our moment of greatest weakness is we cannot defeat death. You Listen, this is sad to say, but I'm going to go ahead and say it just to make it real for you. Today, going home from this funeral, you could be an accident and die. And you know that. I believe in the love and power of God. And that's why he sent his son to give you assurance. Greg's already said the prayer. A little fast, Greg. A little fast. Can I do it slower? I know you're a rookie. Slow. Powerful though, Greg. And all sincerity. Powerful. That, that was Drew and Greg's relationship. Again, I would look at Jackson and I go, what are they, where are they? And they'd be off in the woods and all of a sudden you hear this laughter and you see them both fall out of the golf cart. You never would share what they were laughing about. But. <laughs> it's a prayer of faith, it's a prayer of hope, and it's a prayer of love. Because when, you, when, when I've had those phone calls where I thought my son was dead, and I'm driving them down to the hospital, and the doctors would not talk to me and tell us the news. So I've had just a moment of that. It's terrifying, and it's real. And when Greg says, we have no idea, or some of you that's lost a child, you know, I don't yet. I don't want to know. God sent his son sent him on purpose to help us, to give us faith, to give us hope, to give us love. So, no head bowed, no eye closed. We're going to do a redo on the prayer. Greg set it up beautifully. It's just simple. It's you saying yes to God. And then that you're going to get out of the driver's seat and you're going to admit you're a sinner whatever your addiction is, and 
you're going to come to Jesus. Down south we call it a come to Jesus moment. Okay? Dear Lord, in your heart, pray this. Dear Lord, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I ask you to come into my life as my Lord, my Savior, and my leader. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Help me to follow you all the days of my life. Amen. Before you go to bed tonight, do me a favor. I want you to read John chapter 3 three times. That's in the New Testament. And guess what? If you've got a computer, you can get to a Bible. If you've got a smartphone, you've got more translations on your smartphone than I had in Bible school. Okay? John chapter 3, three times. Tucked away there it is. You need a new birth. You need to be born from above. It's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, Jesus, shall not perish but have everlasting life. And then I love that verse that says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Maybe you need a refresher course on who Jesus is because there's a big mess out here. And everybody's telling you who he is. And there's only one book that tells you who he is, and that's called the Bible. Especially Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. You read John chapter 3 before you go to bed tonight. What are you going to read tomorrow? You say, give me more assignments. You eager beavers, you. I will. John chapter 1. John chapter 2. Even if you didn't pray with me, why not give God a chance? Why not give God a chance? God bless you, Drew. I love that boy. I lost touch with him. Moving around, going off to school. But he, it's so funny. 24 years old, that's the way when he was 8. That's the way he was 10. And he was competitive, but in a nonchalant way. Really funny. Really funny. Jack, not so nonchalant way. <laughs> I played ping pong with him one time and I said if that kid was so small I'd hit him but anyways <laughs> he hurt me with a ping pong ball <laughs> what's up with that God. this concludes this service we're going to drive out to Laco Bell and, uh, and say our final goodbyes some of you if you choose can stay here and keep sharing about, about this funeral about Drew or you can choose to follow the processional, okay, of over Lock Bell. There will be a reception here, finally afterwards, okay? Is that true? It's now. It's what they have right now. That's, so that's what they have. Stay, stay for a snack, and if you can feel compelled to come out of the cemetery, come on out. It's a smaller cemetery, there will be a mix. If you feel perfectly fine to stay here, if that moves you, and you really, really can want to be in the cemetery, Snacks here. All right. Thank you. We're going to now have the uh, funeral director come down and the uh, pallbearers. While they do that, I'll close this in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this time together. We did not want to gather like this, but uh, that's not in our control. So we are grateful for you. We're grateful for Drew's life. Lord, uh, Thank you for even the blessing in this service and what we've learned. So help us, grow us, and help us, Lord, to remember Drew and to keep remembering this family and friends and cousins of all in our prayers in Christ's name.
the peace I've come to know, though my heart.